Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the 704 High School Highlight Podcast. I'm Jeff Taylor, Sports Director with Bay Hackle Sports. And the sponsor for this podcast is the Downer Law Firm, Charlotte's hometown legal team. If you've ever injured, hurt, make sure you check out the Downer Law Firm. We appreciate them and all they do for us and high school sports in our area. So today, I have got a very special guest, a gentleman by the name of Ben Johnson. Yes. He is with the Anthony Moreau Elite. Yes. And uh, let, let's just tell everybody about what that is. Can you tell me a little bit about how it came about? Um, what is the purpose for it? Yes. Okay, it started in the COVID year of 2021 with Anthony Martin's brother, DeMarco Crawford. And uh, we've been in existence since then. We have uh, placed over 40 kids in college. Uh, our main guys that we did that have notoriety at this moment is Nick Dorn, who's possibly be the rookie of the year for Elon, and Jalen Curry, who's doing a great job at UMass. Uh, the coach from South Carolina, what's his name, that left South Carolina, went to UMass. In, oh, uh, uh, Frank. Frank, yeah, Frank Martin. Frank Martin. He coach left, Martin. Coach Martin left uh, South Carolina, went to UMass, and got one um, popular guy. He's a top 100 ESPN guy. Really? Jalen Curry. Wow. He's a monster. He's a left-hand dude, real quick, and he's doing damage. So so both of those guys uh, uh, either be Jalen Curry or uh, – uh, or by uh, uh, my guy from Elon, they both can possibly be rookie of of those conferences. And so this came this came about as a way of just putting forth prospects, right? Kind of like a uh, promotion type Showcase, deal. Okay. Yeah, you know, we start back March the sixth, and now you know all the teams that go down to Rock Hill, and we give all these kids in the area a chance to be exposed to college coaches, and, I, and our goal is to try to get these guys scholarships. So not only can they can develop as an athlete, but as a student, and be able to be a pillar to our community. So how does the showcase? I mean, showcase work. You bring kids in and right. you, play, and you bring them into teams. You bring them. You have a team. Okay. You know, we, we still get eleven kids around the area. We, we have uh, we pick them. We, we start playing. Okay. Hey, you games, and they start in March, and we go all the way through the summer until August. So we right. got this. This is our last weekend off. So when Stars March the 6th is on again. So talk to me a little bit about yourself. We mentioned before the podcast started, so a native, native Charlottean. Is that, is that the way I say it? Yeah, I'm born and raised. <laughs> born and raised Charlotte, North Carolina, Batesville Road. And I, 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 I feel proud to be a part of a lot of uh, of athletes that have made it in the league that I had I had a touch on. You know, we got a lot of godfathers in basketball around Charlotte. We got Malcolm Sanders down at Curry Court. Now, he has a lot of hands on people. I feel I have a lot of hands on guys too. Whether it be Anthony Morrow, right. you know, he, me and his father were best friends, and I remember Anthony when we put him at Charlotte Latin, and he was so uh, such a good kid. Uh, and then he grew went to Georgia Tech, and then after Georgia Tech, he didn't get drafted, but he went to Las Vegas, and still has the scoring record for summer league. Really? Yes. 47 points. Wow, that's pretty stout. Right? It's, it's so <laughs> Golden State said, hey, let me sign this dude. <laughs> and that turned into a career of being, you know, 12 years or whatever. Right. Yeah. So did you uh, play ball then? I played ball in high school. Okay. Independence Where'd you play? High, Independence. Okay. I was the uh, big guy. The big guy. And, I, and, and, and we were just now getting real. Um, they always had a lot of great talent in Independence. Right. But, but back in my day, you know, that's when the Mark Mays of the world, you know, his son's about to get drafted, Luke in the top five. Right. Then we got the Prince of uh, the Wizard of Knoxville, dude named Tony White. Yep. He's in the I play on the same team. Then we had another guy, Jeff McGill. Oh, yeah. He's dead now. You know, right. you know him and uh, Muxy. I talked to Muxy. Um, him and Muxy was, was teammates at Wake Forest. Right. And they wanted to get playing time, so he transferred to Eastern Carolina. And then my best friend, Eric Boyd, uh, he got drafted by Golden State. Right. He was a two-time MEAC player of the year at a and Yep. So, so I mean, you know, so uh, that's where I played. And that's some good ball in the MEAC. Yes. I had a game the um, other day. Uh, I think it was Tuesday. It was uh, Central against Norfolk State. Okay. And, uh, yeah, good good team. I think this year is either going to be Howard, uh, Norfolk State, or – North Carolina Central. Okay. To make to the yeah, so they had some competitive teams. I spent three years in Hampton Road, so Norfolk State, Hampton. Yeah, they say hey, they tough. They, they they got some ball players, and I've uh, seen some great some great games there. Yeah, so you know you know um, I would say who's your number one Hampton play you think of all time? You think you got a, we got one that pop up in your head? I go, Allen. Allen. Yeah. Got to go AI. Got to go AI. 
So I, before we were talking, like yeah, I had yeah. a chance to play against him. Yeah, you told so me. I was, you, on, you, you, I, I was on TV in Hampton <laughs> Roads and uh, Hampton Coliseum sold out, man. And so you know, he, Alan Iverson had a little media weekend and uh-huh. um, he invited me and a guy named Stan Verrett, who okay. now works at ESPN. Yeah, I know Stan. So Stan and I were on the same team and yeah. uh, it was, who was the guy who played in Maryland, was a center? What, Joe Smith? Joe Smith. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, but Alan's guarding me and... <laughs> I'm guarding him, and uh, so I'm trying to guard him, and he made one move and was gone. <laughs> I think he hit the basketball behind his back or something. I don't know what he did, but he was gone. But So then I went down court, and so I got the ball or whatever, and he's like, come on, go ahead. <laughs> so I shot the three. I made it. Yeah. Didn't shoot anymore. That was it. Ended on a good note. <laughs> that was all she wrote. Um, yeah. But, you know, you know, just um, very, you know, um, and, you know, Alan – you know, back in the day, he got a bad rap a lot of times. Right. But one of the nicest guys I ever talked I to. Oh, in, no, in the no, community, no. like I know what he did for Hampton Roads and what he still does for Hampton Roads. Right. Um, but just you know, I know what community meant to him and still means to him. And uh, right. I always felt bad he just got kind of the bad rap. Yeah, yeah, I think too. Another here's the big thing around town since you know I'm born and raised in Charlotte. And, and I didn't and, know you told me he lived here now. He lives here. You know, I go to North Lake. I live close to North Lake Mall, and that's the biggest thing in Charlotte. I saw Alan Harris at North Lake. You did. You talk to him, no, nah, he had his bad with him, he just didn't bother him. <laughs> he likes to go to North Lake. You know, right. he's just a normal person, he just wanted to be normal, and he's the nicest guy in the world. I don't have a personal relationship with him, but I mean, I, just, I see him at North Lake, and I just, you know, let him Allen be Allen. I'll see if I can find it. I'll put it on the podcast or up on our, our webpage or something like that. I've got a picture of, of him and I. Okay. I've still got the uniform. Because we walked in, we walked in the locker room, each team had a uniform, and yeah. it's out, Allen yeah. Iverson All Stars or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that was kind of a cool memory, but um, great. So, yeah. you know, you mentioned, you know, kind of being the godfather or one of the godfathers here in Charlotte in terms right. of high schools and stuff. How cool has it been for you as a, as a man to be able to see these kids grow oh, up and progress and, and become the men they are? I mean, it's great. Just like, you know, what we was talking about the game last night, my nephew, Grant Williams, you know, he just got transferred here a week ago, and Charlotte Hornet has won four straight games. And, and, you know, they could have done that about <laughs> two about months ago. ago. You just think about it. <laughs> I know. They won 40% of their games. They only won 10 since he got here. They won 40% of them in just two weeks. <laughs> right? Just think about that. So so between Grant Williams, Anthony Morrow, right. then we got Junior Burrow. And then we talked about Junior Burrow. Yeah. I go at West Charlotte. I, mean, I went to uh, about eight years ago. I went to a sports store in, in Virginia. Right. And they had the top. Five players all time at UVA. Of course, it's Ralph Sampson, Othell Wilson, but the power four was Junior Burrow. Yeah. Uh, then you got Jeff McGinnis. Yep. And then you got. You I know, remember watching Junior Burrow in an ACC tournament game. Uh-huh. I think it was against Wake Forest. Yeah. And just, he went off. And uh, yes. he could play. He could play. And when you think about, yeah, when you think about the history of Virginia and the players that have come through there, and you right. mentioned Ralph and Odell and uh, Ricky Stokes, and Ricky Jeff Stokes. Lamp, and all I mean, those guys. You know, and the name can go. The head, the head coach for Indiana. What's the name? Him and Bird, good friends. Uh, what's the? What's the? Uh, Carlisle. Yeah, Rick Carlisle. Rick Carlisle. I mean, they shoot had, the lights out. Shoot, I mean, can't leave them open. And now you go back to even now Virginia with their coach Tony Bennett. Bennett, and they won. Who played? For, who played for the Hornets? Played for the Hornets. He was a draft pick by the Hornets. Draft pick, and they finally got the chip with Tony Bennett. I know. Um, great guy. Ain't he nice? I mean, when he, was, guy. when he was playing for Charlotte Hornets, you know, we would see him around, humble guy from Wisconsin. Right. You know, it wasn't no big deal. That's when he had to, we had the big gym down at Tavola. Right. Yeah. So, let's so, move on. when you talk about, mm-hmm. you know, hoops in, mm-hmm. in Charlotte mm-hmm. right now, um, and I've lived here for going on 24 years now, right. um, football has, has kind of grown in terms of talent, if you ask me. Right. But at the end of the day, Basketball has always kind of been there in right. terms of like, yes. um, are you still amazed at, at the talent we even have now? I mean, we can go through the history, but even the players we have today right. are, are think, strong. Yeah, it's just strong. You know, you go back, let's go way back in the 70s when we first started having a, a name. We talk about Bobby Jones, Walter Davis, on those South Mech teams in the 70s. Right. And you take the fast forward 50 years now, it's a lot of talent here that's come out of here now. A whole bunch. And then, you know, back in the day when I was in school in the 80s, all we had was called, let's call it the Fabulous Ten. Mm-hmm. You know, all we had was Independence, West Charlotte, West Bank, North Bank, East Bank, Garringer, uh Harding, Olympic, right. what up a 10? Right. And only one team could make the playoffs. That's how competitive it was up a 10 teams. Now, uh, what we say, maybe we got, what, 35, 40? Yeah, I, I would say 40. 40 high schools. Mm-hmm. So that be. I've been covering eight the last, like, <laughs> two nights, three nights. I mean, um, we got 40 high schools. 
But I watch, like like I said, and I mean, I've, I've watched some games the last couple of nights or whatever, mm-hmm. and I just, I'm amazed at, at, at you know, the, the physical ability. And, what's, and I don't know, you, you help me out here. Okay. To me, um, you know, I'm 56. And, right. and I think that, you know, for me, um, the scenery or, or the emphasis put on high school sports now, as opposed to maybe when we were growing up in right. terms of like, we had basketball, it was this date to this date. Right. We'll see you next this summer, we'll, right? you know, whenever, right? Well, next fall, yeah. and now it's like almost twenty four seven. And I, I just always wonder if that's just too much. Do kids lose maybe some of their, in terms of high school? We're so roped in now on kind of pushing one sport, right? You think kids lose out a little bit about getting so wrapped up into one sport, or maybe in high school it's that time right. where it is time to get. Serious about one sport? Yeah, that's a complicated question. It could be. I think so. You know, one of the things we, we emphasize with our kids is I'm like, I, I'm putting together a little a little notebook of power fives from this area who made the league and non D twos who made the league and then D threes and show you uh, what the possibilities right. are for you to get to that level. Right. So, I mean, if, if by the 10th grade or 11th grade, if, if Michigan, North Carolina, UCLA, uh, you know, probably ain't knocking at your door. Right. That should tell you something. Right. <laughs> I mean, exactly, yeah. Right. I mean, the only only uh, D2 guys from this area, we got uh, Darrell Armstrong, mm-hmm. Fayetteville State. Yeah. He made the league. Real? Okay. All right. He's out of Gastonia. And then that young man out of Wingate, he's a D2 guy. I can't think of his name. He made the Denver Nuggets. Okay. Can't remember. But I yeah. mean, but if it's a very, I mean, your chances of getting it. Well, uh, so, so, so why not concentrate on your academics also and not putting, you know, you could be, play b- basketball. 12 months out of year. But at the same time, why we trying to put in our kids, let's try to develop your uh, your, your academics. That was going to be my next question. How do you guys yeah. at Anthony Moreau Elite, like, right. obviously basketball is important. Right. But is there more to this than yeah. just that? Is, is, yeah. is, is, if we talk about grades, we talk about how to be a man. Right. How, like, the whole mentorship, the okay. whole thing. You know, we try to mentor, you know, you know how are your grades? You know, a lot of lot of Power 5 schools are not going to look at you unless you got a 2.8. A 2.6. Right. You can't even get in academically because right. you can't even handle the coursework. Right. So what are we doing? And, you know, some of the kids that are underachieving, we say, we got all the tools you need as a, as a high school guy. Sure. You got the internet. You can Google any question. Boom. And yeah. it's right there in front of you. You know, why are you underperforming? Right. And we got to say it's because your effort, you know. Right. You got to put your... So you encourage them. The, yeah. effort, the effort should be equal on the court. Yeah, it's the same. The it's got to be the same. And in the community. And what we find out, you know, with all the uh, social things that you have, is that you can get distracted. Right. You know, through, through music. Quick. Through hanging out with the wrong crowd. You know, unfortunately, we had to uh, deal with certain things that happened in the summer with some of my kids that caught up in some bad things and lost their life. Yeah. You know, they, they say on the streets, now, I'm about that life. I say, but, you know, one one thing Anthony had told these kids, man, say people ain't playing around here. Right. Right. You think you think it's a game when you when you go out here and start doing things in the street and think nobody ain't watching you, trying to get you. You never know who's watching you, man. Right? So let's say, hey, man, you got to be careful out here because you can lose it. your life. Right. And, and, and it's a sad part. But it's true. Yeah. So let, yeah, let, when you, you know, for me, when I hear the word elite. Okay. And I'm a young man. Yeah. I hear elite. I'm like, okay, I'm the man. Yes. How do you keep teenage boys level-headed? Well, uh, by, by trying to develop them mentally as, as, as physically. And let's be elite with our, uh, our behavior inside and outside always remember that you represent not only yourself but your family and anthony morrow you know we invest in a lot of our kids you know uh, for the for the first three four years we asked for no sponsors you know we're paying for all the to all the time we paying for the uniforms we just want do want you to be uh elite uh, as a whole complete young man not only inside the uh the court but outside so, because a lot of people are watching you. Yep, and you never know. You never know who's watching. watching so, you. so, so you know, including ourselves, we gotta as as coaches, we gotta monitor what we're doing. So if I'm at 
if I'm at a Walmart and I see you, I see, and, I, and then somebody makes me agitated, I can't, I, like, I just got to go to jail. Right. They ain't that, I just hit this with my studio. What are you doing? Right. Why are you acting like, crazy? Why are you acting crazy? <laughs> I know. So, I, yeah, so, no, so, I, so you, you got to <laughs> I got it. You know, you know, in other major cities, you know, obviously Charlotte's a, a, a mid-major market. It's not New York, L.A., Chicago. When you're in Los Angeles, you, you get lost. Quick. In New York, you get lost. Charlotte's yeah. still that small, small town and big city. You know small what I'm saying? Small town, town big city. So, right. so if you get to any level of notoriety People in Maine, you. you stick out like a sore thumb. Right. You are a big fish in a small pond. So you, you don't think nobody's watching you, but you somebody's watching. Right. And that's great when those big fish, what you're teaching them, when those big fish go into a big pond with other big fish. Right. Then they all kind of like mesh it together. So right. how, does, how, does, how does the organization work in terms of, because you mentioned like sometimes you've paid for it yourself. How does it work in terms of, and what do you provide for the kids? Well, we provide for them, um, like uh, when we go out of town, we provide uh, uh, hotels. Uh, sometimes we ask the parents to help out a little bit. We, right. we provide uniforms. Right. We provide uh, meals sometimes. You got to get them there. You got to get get them transportation. You know, sometimes we rent a van, or sometimes we might ask the family to drive them. Okay. You know, when we go to places, you know, three four hours like Atlanta, right, or where it be Raleigh or D.C. You know, so we provide them you know, both of the things ourselves. So. Um, People can sponsor you. Yeah, people can okay. sponsor me. Yeah, that's just okay. yeah. We we ask us for you know anybody that does is willing to help us to sponsor us and. Uh, is that something that like in terms of like how do they reach you or could they? Yes, they can. Have, we have a website, okay. AnthonyMarElite.com. Okay. And uh, there's there's numbers I could guess I emails I guess we could share. Okay. And yeah. And then you know. We're trying to take as many sponsors as we can and try to. Well, what we'll do is we'll get you and I will get together and we'll put some links on. Yeah. When we'll this some, podcast yeah, hits, we'll, right, we'll have we'll some stuff at the bottom. Some, so they can link some. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And, and, so, and, uh, yes, so let me ask you this. In mm-hmm. terms of, I'm going to go down a road now. Okay. That I've gone down with some coaches. All right. And I've gone down with some players, but I'd like to get your kind of feedback because you're kind of right in it. For me, um, the transfer portal. Yes. I, and people know who've watched this, I don't like it. Right. I've never liked it. Right. Now, I I get sometimes where if you, let's say, went to play for Shane Beamer down in South Carolina for football. Okay. And he recruited you and loved Shane Beamer and all of a sudden he leaves. Right. I get it. Or Coach Dion comes in and goes, yeah, hey, right. I'm bringing my team with me. <laughs> you guys may not have any spots. Right. Leave. Mm-hmm. To me, it's the you know the, the kids that like, I'm not getting enough playing time. I'm going to go work somewhere else. Right. Well, why aren't you getting a playing time? Yes. Are you not getting to play in time because you're not putting in the effort? Right. Or, you know, so, and for me, and especially with you working with high school kids, I just see, I, uh, Tony Bennett, prime example. All right. I talked to him during the ACC days in here in Charlotte where we got to talk with all the coaches. And I asked him about it, and um, he said, like, you know, I have five new guys on the team. Okay. Four are transfer portal. Okay. That left me one spot. Right. For a freshman. Okay. One. Yeah. Wait, it used to be five. Gotcha. And now it's one. I, it, to me, it's just it's it's taken away from the high schools a little bit. Yeah. What do you what do you think? I, I believe the same thing, and I think it's gonna take some time to us to generate data to try to find a happy medium to find the right. I think fit. the regulation is a good word for it. Regulate, yeah. yeah, because you know we're just starting, and I think once we accumulate enough information and data, we can try to find. A happy medium, right? So it'll be, but right now, like I said, it is out of whack, and like I said, it doesn't take much, you know, with some of my kids, you know, who don't want to listen. And like I was, I would say, at the beginning of our practice next week, we'll say, once we pull you out the game, it's not personal, right? You'd still be a teammate. I'm coaching. <laughs> We're coaching. Uh, uh, we coach. It's right. not, you know, it's nothing that we feel that you do, even though you might have turned the ball over three straight times and shot three bricks. And, but we still, when you come out, it ain't used to get mad at us. Right. It's still 10 guys. So we, we don't play for the team name, not your name. Right. So it's not personal. Sure. But the only problem with that is once they hear that horn blow, oh, man, it's personal. Yeah. And they come to the bench and they moping and, moping and why why you do this to me. Right. And so let's take it to the level of, of power fives. So if that happens at the power five level, if, well, if, if Tony Bennett won't let me do my thing in Virginia, I got uh, XYZ, I got South Carolina, Georgia calling and say, hey, we're going to let you do your thing. Right. 
So where can we, you know, I mean, if I can't get my way with Tony Bennett, maybe I can get my way right. with Herb Davis in North Carolina. Right. Or I could go to Where's State. the happy medium? Where's the happy medium? Yeah. You know, but every kid, of course, their ultimate goal is to be on the court. Right. So they can showcase what they can do so they can ultimately make their $9 million like Steph Curry and LeBron James. And, <laughs> and you know, and the, you and, know? And, the inter- and the interesting part, too, is, mm-hmm. you know, I think what's been somewhat cool is for these kids who are, you know, incoming freshmen in college or whatever, hey, don't forget about the D2 and D3 schools out there. Right. I mean, right. at the end of the day, college, I played college football Division three. Right, right. But I played college football. Right. I, I tell people all the time, I played college football. Right. I wasn't in front of 100,000 fans <laughs> and, you know, uh, yeah. at, at Tennessee, but I right. was, you know, I played. Oh, and, yeah. And it's something that I, I'm happy about, I'm proud about, and I tell others about. So yeah, I think yeah. that's the thing, too. Is But for me, it's, yeah, you know, like you said, it's just – there's, there's still that regulate, and then you th- throw COVID on top of it, right? You know, ki- you know, now they gave some people an extra year, yeah, so right. You had an extra year, right? Then you get the transfer portal, and it just kind of all, you know, kind of gets that way. So, so I think you know, I, uh, for as regulation of date, I guess I don't know if there's a fine number. I would say let's say let's track the date 2024. Let's let the data accumulate over four or five, five years. years, right? So let's say let's say the year 2028. Let's see how this plays out. And then somehow, once we take all this information to see how this works out, we can massage it a little bit and right. try to cut it in the middle to be compromisable and diplomatic right. so both sides will feel like, you know, nobody's being slighted. Right. Oh, so okay. I think it's going to take time. No, I, I, agree. I, it's, it's, I agree. It's not no – I don't think it's no right answer think, at the moment because it's just started. I think for a lot of people, too, it's just raw, too. The raw emotions the of The raw like, emotions. And as much as I hate to say it, though, it's, it's like – you still feel a little sympathy though for these kids who are in that area. Right. You know, some of the kids right now who are in that right in that two or three year span where all this is going down. Yeah. And not getting a chance to play. Because I would like to say, let's take for example with the Charlotte Hornets right now. Like I'm looking at Trey Mann last night from Florida. I mean, he wasn't really getting no minutes where he was at. Right. Now he's with the Hornets starting. And we say, Wow, I didn't know he was that good. I mean, I didn't think he was that athletic. Right. You know, I mean, I like LaMelo Ball, but Trey Mann is a different fit. He's different. I mean, he's 6'4". He's got live legs. He can shoot the ball. He's healthy. He's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not I'm not, not, <laughs> not, not going to LaMelo. LaMelo uh, is great. But I'm saying, but Trey Mann, that's all, so that's all about getting the opportunity. And making the most of it. And make the most of it. So people can say, wait a minute. I didn't know Trey Mann had this in his bag. Right. And sometimes I do, and then I guess yeah. Sometimes it's a change, change of scenery. Change of scenery. Just boom, that that makes it you know a lot, yeah. a lot different. Okay, along those same lines. Okay. Um. So it just came out recently that, um, the private schools. Okay. Could have the NIL. Yeah. In high school here in, in North Carolina. In North Carolina, right. The private schools. Yes. Could do the NIL. The public schools. No. No. Yeah. Um. I don't like the NIL either. No, but well, but okay, but, okay. but I, I think it just becomes. And um, we were at a press conference a couple weeks ago for the Keep Pounding Football Classic, okay. which will be played in August. And it was DJ McFadden okay. from Independence. It was uh, Chris James from Myers Park, Andy Capone from Weddington, and Chad Greer from Providence Day. Okay. And at the end of the press conference, nobody had asked the question about the NIL, but then Thomas Davis was there. And Thomas Davis like, all right, because none of you people want to ask. Oh, he'll be the <laughs> he, one. He'll, he'll be, be the one. one. So, so he, take, okay, he said, ahead. hey, you know, the NIL can now be with the private schools. What do you think? And Chad Greer was like, you know, I don't think people are thinking like when we mentioned the NIL for in high school, um, you know, um, one of their players had just signed an NIL deal with Gatorade. Right. Um, and what he got out of it was a sweatshirt. Oh, okay, right. You know, yeah, blah, blah, blah. and it gets back to regulation and stuff like that. I, I, I didn't like the NIL to a point, but but I think, you know, if you're going to give it to the private schools, mm-hmm. you got to do it with the public right. schools. And I think there are kids who could use it. Yes. And deserve it. Right. And could go a long way in terms of helping them and, and the their family. family. I, and, and the point is, a lot, mm-hmm. look, how many... How many, like, I don't, you know, the percentage of how many kids play high school ball that end up making the NFL, the NBA, MLB, or something like that? It's, right. it's minimal. minimal. So I, my, my mind has changed yeah. a little bit because if you've got a kid for two years in high school and four years in college, right. and he's not going to go anywhere after that. Right. 
why don't we maximize? Yeah, right. I, I was it's, taking about thinking about the game tonight. You look at when North Mexico going to play Chambers, right? Right. And take a kid like Isaiah Evans, right? Yep. McDonald's All American. Duke. Going to Duke. Yep. Nice family. Good kid. Very intelligent. Man can ball out. <laughs> I mean, he goes from the half court, then lets it fly from 27 feet like it's a layup. Right. Imagine him with a patch with North Mexico right now with an NIL deal. Mm-hmm. How much money he could generate right now. Right. <laughs> wow. I know. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, but then here's another thing about transfer portal. If the private schools is having and the public schools having and it's not having it, you think a private school like Providence State Cannon or Charlotte Lattice, Charlotte Clavier College, to, hey, I got, I, I got a hundred grand for you. I, yeah. Right? You want to come over? So, so that's going to so take, well, take away from the public. And what gets me is, you know, you start thinking about regulation and stuff with yeah. all of that. What what bothers me more than anything? Um, so I get it. I get the NIL. I do. I, okay. I still don't like it to a point. But, right, right. I mean, to me, like if a college kid, if a kid goes to college and gets a full ride, mm-hmm. okay, you're getting an entire college education yeah. paid for for free. Right. Do you need more? Like, right. you know, like I mean. How much do you need? Right, you know, and, 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 and when other kids... Listen, other kids could use it. Right. You, you know, that whatever you give could, could really go help other people. Right. What scares me, Ben, is, um, and we're seeing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you mentioned the transfer portal. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't happen in high school. Yeah, come on. Like, it doesn't happen <laughs> in high school. Like, you know, I mean, I see kids all the time on their Twitter going, hey, I've been at this school for yeah. the last three years, yeah, but yeah. now I'm going to take my, <laughs> you know, I'm going over to this school. That's right. Um. Are we losing the purity? Probably. Do you know what I'm getting Probably. at? I mean, for yeah. me, right. it's yeah. always the high school, Pop Warner, you know, middle school, high school, that's always been the purity right. of sports. Yeah. Um, without the business aspect and all this other junk that kind of goes along with it, I'm scared we're going to lose the purity of what Probably. high school sports yeah. means. So and for parents, you know, why am I, if there are 10 kids on a team for basketball or 11 right. or whatever, and my kid's like, I'm not, I don't know. You know, right. I'm not going to play. I don't want to play. Blah, blah, blah. It, yeah. You don't get that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to take away. But I was thinking about, too, uh, everybody's doing the commercials about North Carolina FanDuel. Oh. That's coming March the 13th. <sighs> so think about that. So what's the date? The 23rd? Yeah. Two more weeks. We're going to have legal gambling in North Carolina. Right. So, I mean, it's going to, I mean, you got to feel that. You know, when you got millions and millions of dollars being exchanged, Somewhere the soul of the game is going to lose. Right. But how do you, but how, do, how do you stop how that? How do we stop it? And, and I, I, don't know I, don't, that, I don't know that we can. I don't know if we can. Not at this moment. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, that's tough. That's a tough, that's another tough question. But is that something cool with like what you guys do? Because to me, you're kind of out of the scope of We're out of that. Right? You're out of that scope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I so you can do a little more of your own like. Right. You know, regulating and right, stuff. Right, I right. think that's the gist of it. It is still all brand new. I get it. Right. I just think so, we need to take some time to, so, you know. So get, if we regulate it, you know, with these high school NINs for the for private for the private schools, who established the cap on how much a high school kid can make? Who makes that decision? Or well, is unlimited? If somebody want to throw a kid three hundred grand, he's on a sixteen, seventeen, hundred thousand, fifty thousand. How do you regulate that? Right. Or how much that young man gets. And, you know, who regulates what he does with it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, <laughs> well, I would hope it's Paris. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to go buy me a car. <laughs> right. I don't hope but it's no, going to blow. I mean, yeah, you don't want to blow. You, know, you can blow that money right. one day. You know, I think that I, I hope that, and, and DJ McFadden brought up a very good point. He okay. said, you know, he goes, I just want it to be equal. Right. If the private schools are getting it, you know, the public schools. But he's like, you know, I think that it doesn't need to be maybe like, you know, the athletic high school athletic association. Right, right. It needs to be the coaches. Right. The coaches need to come together and go, here's what's presented to us. Right. Here's what we're going to do because we're there every day. Every day, yeah. You know, people in offices, wherever, right. they're not around these kids. They don't know. But if, if you get the coaches together and kind of, you know, roll with it, then, 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 then do it. Right, I think they need to start having these conversations like now. I agree. As soon as, as soon as you know, we can have an open mind, oh, and all the coaches sit around and just have an open book where we talk about what's fair and try to get it now before it gets here. Right. So we can try to figure out how we're going to massage this thing because it's right. common like an avalanche. Right. No, I agree. So, yeah, it's it's, it's built. It's a snow. A little it's snow a snowball ball right it's now. Gonna be, yeah. It's going to be a big one. Agreed. All right. Yeah. Final uh, question for yes, you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
best basketball player to come out of Charlotte. Ooh, that's a big ever, one. Ever. Oh, you know what? You know, I hear this all the time in the barber shops all across <laughs> Charlotte. You know, I'm I'm right in the Batesville Road corridor, and you know, I, I've been I played ball all over Charlotte. So I must say, hands down, the best player ever in Charlotte history has got to be Johnny Edwards, South Mech. Wow. You ever heard of him? I have not. <laughs> so you never heard of no. him? No. But As, I'm not a true Charlatan. Right, so right. I'm not, I'm I like, would say Johnny Edwards, by, I mean, unbelievable, 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He was like Zion, but a little smaller. <laughs> but he was a man-child. Was he? With, at Quail Hall of ninth grade. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was dunking the ball, two hands off the glass. I mean, he was just a powerhouse. People talk about Walter Davis, uh, Bobby Jones. Right. But, right. Mm-hmm. But they got uh, Bobby Jones got his uh, jersey retired to Philadelphia. Walter Day was just that got his number retired in Phoenix Suns. He was right. rookie of the year. Right. All right. And you and you ask uh, Davis, uh, his older brother Herb, he just passed. You ask anybody around Charlotte who's the best all time? Johnny Edwards. Got it. He went to he went to Indiana State. Okay. Got kicked out. Went to East Carolina. Kicked out. Now he's in jail. I mean, he's one of those guys that came from my neighborhood that never got it right. Right. As far as you know, guidance. Or well, just just out the street, he just listened to like well, you know, say what the kids said. I'm about that life, right? So he was about that life to an extreme that got him, and had he had something like your organization, right? You, if he had something like this, we could mentor and say, "Hey, right. man, what are you doing out right. here?" Right. And if I see about baseball road doing something crazy, you're John, it's time to go home, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but you know what? One of the best things he told me one day. This was like in the mid '90s, and he said, "You know, do you remember?" Uh, Guy from Creighton, Benjamin um, uh, the Center, played for the Clippers, played at Creighton. Anyway, he was at Indiana State, and he said the guy was talking to him. He said they was running right next to each other. He threw it off the glass and dunked it backwards on him. I mean, he was just unreal. Wow. And, and they, um, his senior year, they played the Matha at Bojangles. Really? Wow. Right? And then the classic story of Charlotte was, now he went to South Park and got arrested for uh, – Still in pocketbook, South Park. They got him out of jail. Ironically, they was playing Myers Park that same night. And then he got out of jail? No one no, okay. don't say that. <laughs> 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 don't you to, don't do me like that. Man. But yeah, so so they got him out, right? right. Ironically, they played Myers Park. That's right. Uh Myers Park Park is right there by South, South Park. Park. So all the kids had their posts. Johnny can't read, Johnny can't oh. write. Boy, was that a mistake. He, jump ball, jump ball, get it, get it. I mean, first play, tap it to himself, dunk. Next play, catch off rebound, dunk. He had six dunks in the first quarter. He's probably leading score that night. <laughs> probably. I mean, so, you yeah. know, I would say, so can I give my top five shot all the time? Yeah, absolutely. I'm have no, go ahead. Have now, now, I'm going to say point guard. I guess we got to go Steph Curry. Two guard, uh, Walter Davis. At the three, or power forward, I got to go Bobby Jones. So we got Steph Curry, all this Bobby Jones. Then I got to go Johnny Edwards. And then my center. You know, we, we don't talk about Jason Parker. Heard of Jason Parker? I have. So I got to go either Antoine Jameson or Jason Parker. So I got to go Antoine Jameson. Yeah. I mean, they both good. I mean, but Jason Parker on that same plane, not as bad as Johnny Edwards, but same West Charlotte guy who we get – you know, prototype is like he's ran into some problems. Right. But a legit pro. Right. But he Just didn't. never. Never. But see, look like Antoine Jameson. He's Providence. Right. Right. He went from, from the straight West Charlotte. Providence so, High School. Providence High School. So it's a different That's dynamic. where my kids went. I didn't want to do I didn't know him. His, no, no, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. You didn't know him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, the, you, know, so, three, you know, his jersey hanging in the rafter yeah. uh, at Providence so, High School. So I would say Steph, Walter Davis at the two. Johnny. Johnny, Bobby Jones, and Antoine. and Antoine. Then after that, another five. We go Jeff McGinnis. Then you got um, Byron Dinkins, Tony White. It's a whole bunch whole of list. Guys. But top five, I got to go that. Steph Curry at that point. Walter Davis at two. Johnny Edwards, Bobby Jones, Antoine James. Well, I, I like it. Oh, well, you know, I will put my nephew in there, but he still got Come some. Come on boys. now. We can oh, I, I can't, I we'll can't. put him at six. I'll let, let, let my Grant Williams <laughs> be six man. Let him win out. Yeah, yeah. That went out. <laughs> That'll come like he did last night. He came in last night, scored 24 points. But, you know, it's, it, yeah, it, so, it, it's I mean, at least it, – it, it's good – listen, it, to me, it's been the talk of the town. Yes. And, and it's just cool to have that 
breath of fresh air. Yeah. Because the, the, Pan, the Panthers had their, whatever, you know. <laughs> and I mean, the Hornets, you know, and I mean, it's just, it's, it, Charlotte just needs something right now. Yes. And it's been kind of cool just, to, just to watch it, to and, hear it, and, 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 and like, people talk know, about it. I'll tell you, you know, one thing, you know, we said our family was so blessed, and, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And for, for us, uh, for my parents, his grandparents, to be, you know, close to 90, to actually experience it. Yep. You know, we got a suite now at Spectrum, and we go to all the games in the suite. It's to see my daddy, who's 90, and my mother 90. So if I knock on the door of the suite, I can come on in? Anytime. <laughs> hey, I'm there. Anytime. Guess what? And guess what I like about the suite first day? I mean, all the food, drinks. Hey. So come and have a chicken wing with us. Sweet light. I'll do it. All right, man. Ben Johnson, <laughs> thanks for your time. Thanks all right, for thank all you. you do for our kids. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Blessings to you. Uh, thank Let's you, get ready for the uh, upcoming stuff. Uh, thank cool. you, Cool. Right. Ben Johnson with Anthony Morrow Elite. Make sure you check out their website. We'll get some numbers and stuff where you can make, uh, if you're thinking about sponsoring or something yeah. like that, yeah. and help them out. That'd be great. You'd be helping the kids. So that is it for this edition of the 704 High School Highlight Podcast. Listen, we're trying to grow this. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen or watch your podcast. And, of course, we want to thank the Down Law Firm for sponsoring it. They are Charlotte's hometown legal team. If you've ever injured in an accident, make sure you check out the Down Law Firm. Until next time, have a great week.